In part one of this series, we talked about Ashara Dane and everything we know about her. In part two, theories involving her and Brandon Stark. In part three, let's talk about theories involving Ashara, Ned, Liana, and Benjen. Full disclosure, these are not my theories, but simply some heavily believed fan speculations. Starting with Ned and Ashara. A popular theory is that Ned and Ashara fell in love at the tourney of Harrenhal. In part one, I talked about how Ned and Ashara danced at Harrenhal, and that after Robert's rebellion, there were rumors Jon Snow was Ned and Ashara's baby. While we don't know how close the two girls were, Ashara's own sister, Illyria, believes and tells people that Ashara and Ned were in love. Ashara's sister believes they were in love so deeply that she told the story to her nephew and the current Lord of Starfall, Edric or Ned Dane, who was born five-ish years after Robert's rebellion and Ashara's death. Kind of an odd thing for your sister to make up and still be telling people, even after you're dead. And Illyria is so convincing in this story, Ned Dane believes it and tells Arya Stark the same tale. Then we have Barristan who thinks how Ashara looked to a Stark. Could this have been our Ned? Along with Cersei Lannister believing Ned may have slept with Ashara and took the baby, quite a few people seem to think Ashara and Ned had a relationship. Did Ned and Ashara dance, exchange words, make promises, maybe sleep together, and stay in contact? Catelyn Stark notes that Ned was pretty much all duty during their first time together in bed, which might not surprise some given Ned has been described as having ice water in his veins. But what if at first his heart wasn't in it because he was in love with another? A love that wasn't meant to be. Ashara and Ned are happy, have a new romance, then Lyanna is stolen the next year, Brandon rides to King's Landing, and is executed along with Ned's father. And then, Robert's rebellion begins. Alliances had to be made if Ned wanted to keep his head, and Ned had a duty to marry his dead brother's intended. Having few choices, he married Catelyn Tully and fought against the Mad King. By the time he got to Starfall, he was a married man, perhaps had a baby Jon Snow, and a land to rule as the Warden of the North. When Ned came to her to return the sword, and maybe say his goodbyes, Ashara was in a bad place. She had lost her child, lost her brother, killed by the man she loved, and now realized that the man she loved was married to another and could never be with her. To add to the grief, she may have believed Jon Snow was Ned's baby, making it more a slap in the face. Just how many women had this man been with while making those promises to her? After Ned left, she couldn't handle the grief of losing her child, brother, and love, so she jumped off the tower and into the sea. Ned thinks of the price he paid to keep Lyanna's promises. Ashara's life could have been part of that price, which might explain why he silences any whispers about Ashara at Winterfell. The guilt is just too much. An alternative to Ned and Ashara being in love is that the baby didn't die. After the Tower of Joy, Ned goes to Starfall to return the sword and say his goodbyes to the woman he loved but could never be with. Surprise, she was pregnant with his child. Or not surprise, and he was coming to collect the baby named Jon Snow. How do you think that would make you feel? The man you loved and promised to marry you comes to your home, lets you know he won't be marrying you, he's married another, he killed your brother, and now is going to take your bastard child and raise it as his own back home, with his wife. That might push someone over the edge of a tower. If Ashar jumped because Ned did, as Cersei accused him, steal her baby after killing her brother, why is there some heavy evidence that the Danes don't think ill of Ned and might in fact hold him in high esteem? Heck, why would they like him even if he didn't steal the baby and it had died? He broke her heart. Perhaps because he returned their ancient sword after killing Arthur? Maybe Ashara knew it had to be this way, agreed to it, and the Danes knew how much Ashara and Ned loved each other. They parted at Starfall, loving each other but knowing they couldn't be together. Despite that, Ashara couldn't handle it and eventually jumped. To honor that love, even if it ended in tragedy, they gave Edric the nickname Ned. Though I'm not sure if my sister had killed herself due to grief over a man if I'd then nicknamed my child after him, but we don't know the whole story. And Ned actually might be a badass legend, which is why they gave him the nickname Ned. Yeah, I go by the nickname of the guy that killed our last sword of the freaking morning. Also, as I mentioned in part two, Ned is a normal nickname for Edric, so it could have had nothing to do with Ned. But if they did nickname Edric after Ned, they may have been more willing if Ned agreed to take the bastard child and raise it as his own out of respect for Ashara, or if he agreed to take it after Ashara jumped from grief. Problems with this theory, the tourney was in 281 AC, Robert's Rebellion ended in 283 AC, 
John would look a lot older than baby Rob, and there is no way he'd pass off as being conceived during the rebellion. But George has been very open about Ashara not being nailed to the floor, having horses in Dorne, and that she was in King's Landing for a time. Maybe they were lovers after the tourney for a bit until Ned had to put her aside for duty. You really have to play the maybe in What If game to get the timing right. And if you really want to go full tinfoil, which I'm guessing at least one person out there does, some think that this may tie into Rickard Stark's Southron ambitions. And the reason why we don't hear Ned having any betrothals while Rickard had Lyanna and Brandon's lined up is because Ned was still trying to push for his and Ashara's, which may have been enticing for Rickard if he really was scheming. Get a well-respected house tied to his and a Kingsguard member as a brother-in-law to his son. What if Ashara was visiting Ned in the Vale? Though I'm not quite sure how Robert Baratheon wouldn't notice her being in the Vale from time to time with Ned and then bring that up years later about who was the possible mother of Jon Snow. But even if you don't want to go full tinfoil in that regard, the age problem is solved in the last Ned Ashara theory. Ned and Ashara were in love, slept together at the tourney at Harrenhal, and their child is actually Illyria Dane. If she was born in 282 AC and she was betrothed to Beric Dondarrion since 294 AC, that puts her age around 12-ish when the arrangement was made. That is a reasonable age for a lady to be promised. People that support this theory believe that the Danes claimed Illyria as Ashara's father's child, lied about Ashara's stillbirth, but raised Illyria on tales of Ashara and Ned's love. So one day if they told her the truth, she would know how much her parents loved each other. But why would they lie about Ashara being her mom? To save her from dishonor? Then why share she had a stillbirth? If they even did, we don't really know how Barristan knows about the stillbirth when no one else seems to mention it. Also, why would she kill herself if she had a healthy daughter? Because they wouldn't let her keep it? Then we go back to, why wouldn't they? One explanation I've read is that she wanted a fresh start after losing her brother and lover and allowed her family to raise her child, pretended to commit suicide, and now might be a certain Septa helping out a maybe fake Targaryen. Besides that, the only other explanation I've seen is that they knew Ned was married and understood why he had to do it, to win a war, and he may not have been aware of Ashara being pregnant. They knew that he had a family now, and after seeing that he went out of his way to return their family sword, they decided to take one for the team, lie to Ned about the baby, and raise it as a legitimate child of House Dane. While bastards aren't looked down upon in Dorne as much as they are in the rest of the Seven Kingdoms, the Danes may have wanted good marriage possibilities to be open for the child. Marriage possibilities that wouldn't be available for a bastard. The Danes might also care more about legitimate children as they originate in the western Red Mountains, and therefore would be stony Dornishmen, which are a group of Dornish that keep to the Andal traditions and laws more than the sandy and salty Dornishmen. So instead, they raise the child as Ashara's true-born sister. Though, imagine that ruse. Hey, didn't Ashara have stillborn? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, wait, why do you have a newborn? I don't remember your wife being pregnant, Lord Dane. Sure she was, you just didn't notice. This is my daughter. Her name's Illyria. Oh. Neat. That's not suspicious. My end thoughts on Ashara and Ned before moving on to Lyanna and Benjen. While I like the idea of Ned being in love with another woman before getting married, I would be happy if they did just have a tiny spring fling at Harrenhal and that was it. I mentioned in part two just losing a sibling can be one of the hardest things you will ever experience in your life. So her committing suicide doesn't have to be connected with losing Ned or being pregnant by him, if she was ever pregnant. Their fling and the suicide could be completely separate. The last two theories involve Lyanna and Benjen and have the least amount of support, so it includes a large amount of speculation by fans. Lyanna and Ashara. There is speculation that Ashara was actually at the Tower of Joy helping with Lyanna's birth, and that is how Willa got involved. Some even believe that Ashara had a hand in helping Rhaegar take Lyanna, whether that was by kidnapping or lovers running away. Ashara was Ilya Martell's lady-in-waiting and may have heard about the plans or later that Rhaegar's mistress was pregnant and needed help. Depending on how for the plan Ilya Martell was, Ashara's involvement could have been greater. So, assuming Ashara was at the Tower of Joy to help out, some fans speculate when Jon Snow was born, Ashara took the boy to Starfall to be taken care of by the wet nurse Willa, as Lyanna was sick or dying post-birth. Why would the Kingsguard still be at the tower if the royal baby was gone, though? Maybe they decided sending a Kingsguard with Ashara would be a huge indication to someone the baby with her was important, 
so they decided a lone rider with a baby was less suspicious. If Robert Baratheon knew there was another Targaryen baby out there, he'd be screaming for some skull-smashing, child-stabbing round two. Anyways, when Ned arrives at the Tower of Joy, Lyanna makes him promise to retrieve Jon, take care of him, don't tell Robert, etc. So he does. Believers of this state, Ned having to travel to Starfall for Jon makes more sense than Ned simply going to return a sword. Though Ned heading to Starfall to just return his sword doesn't seem that out of character for him. Benjen and Ashara, I've read a few and this one isn't as popular and I think it's because it has the least amount of evidence. There is a theory that Benjen and Ashara were actually lovers and that Benjen was the one who dishonored Ashara or got her pregnant at the tourney at Harrenhal. Later, when Ned returned Dawn to Starfall, he figured out what Benjen had done. When she lost the baby and killed herself, Benjen took the black out of guilt. The only real evidence I've seen presented for this is that it gives Benjen a reason to join the Night's Watch, which he did very quickly after Ned's return from war. But there's already plenty of reasons for Benjen to have joined, and being a young man under 15, it's not known how good Benjen was with the ladies back then, especially to woo one of the most beautiful ladies in the Seven Kingdoms. Lastly, Ashara could have nothing to do with the Starks, and there's no hidden story. She was pregnant, did or didn't have a stillbirth, and killed herself over losing her child and or brother. There are so, so many other Ashara theories linked to the Starks. I always consider theory videos to be more discussion videos where I list some facts and theories, and then the fun part happens. We all talk about our thoughts on the theories in the comments below and speculate the hell out of it, and go crazy waiting for the next book. So thank you for watching, hopefully you found these Ashara Dane Stark theories at least to be fascinating even if you don't believe any of them. Thank you for watching, thumbs up helps the channel and video a lot, and have a fantastic week.